Hey there, my name is Jared Decker. Uh, I'm a photographer in Portland, Oregon, and I'm making this video today because I wanted to talk about social media and how it affects my art and my business and my soul, and I'm also curious how it affects yours. Um, so I'm looking for feedback uh, from other people and, and how it affects their world. I've never had a good relationship with social media. It's always been really frustrating for me and I've invested a significant amount of time in it. Um, I've been a musician for about 25 years and it wasn't the whole reason, but I think it had a major role in why I stopped playing music. I was constantly reminded, I feel, that I was failing. Um, when social media became huge and that's what everybody did was you record your stuff and you you push it on social media and when we started doing that and not necessarily getting the response we wanted um, it was really frustrating and disheartening and and uh, it, there was also other factors that I'd just been doing it for so long and, and I started getting more into photography and it was something new and exciting um, the big difference between music and photography is for me is when I was 12 years old and standing in front of a mirror with a guitar on pretending I was Jimmy Page, that's, that's what I wanted to be when I grew up. Um, photography was never a career option, but when I got into it, that wasn't my drive. It was because I really enjoyed it. I liked the calming aspects of going out in the woods and, um, yeah, it was just, it was something very fresh and very different and I really enjoyed it. Um, and at the beginning, social media wasn't really a factor, uh, but as I started getting more into it, it became one. Um, a colleague friend of mine recommended that I post a photo on reddit.com and this was pretty early, probably a year into me um, sh shooting regularly. And it went, crazy it went straight to the front page and it got a really good response um it got me posted on a pretty major blog called this is colossal.com which has a huge base and i mean I, my website had fifteen thousand hits or something in a day um which coming from music where i had struggled so hard to get any you know validation for what i was working on this was huge for me and and it it felt awesome and it was really exciting. Now I sold, I think one print from that. Uh, I mean, I don't know what attention it got me that later led to other things. Um, every time I sell something, I don't ask them, ask the customer where I, where they heard of me. Um, but it was, it was really exciting. Um, I don't post much to Reddit. I do occasionally, but it, I'm not a real fan of downvoting. I don't see the point in going out of your way to tell somebody that you think their art sucks. There's plenty of art out there that I think sucks. I don't tell the artist. I look at it, I don't like it, and I carry on, I go, go about my business. Um, it seems like a huge waste of everyone's time to go and purposely say that you don't like something and tell somebody that you think it sucks, unless they're asking. Um, at the same time, there is a, a great group of people on Reddit and I've gotten a lot of support for, for a lot of the stuff I've, I've posted. Um, but so yeah, Reddit's not a huge one, but that's the one that kind of got me excited. Um, so when that happened, I, I just saw the, the amount of people that my work was shown to through social media. So I was, um, I was motivated. And I started, you know, working with other platforms. Basically, Instagram and Facebook are the two uh, that I started using and, and still use. I tried some other Pinterest and some other ones that just frustrated me. Um, not that Instagram and Facebook don't, but um, so I started posting on Instagram, started, you know, trying to figure out the whole hashtag thing and, and, what it was going to do for me. But when you're trying to, to take your art from just something you're doing as a hobby to a business, 
you have to figure out what you're trying to sell before you figure out who you're selling it to. I still don't know if I really have figured either of those things out. Um, but the main idea at the beginning, at least, was I'm going to sell prints. But I don't know who buys prints. Um, I don't really buy many. Um, so it was hard trying to figure that stuff out. Um, Instagram seemed just like such a great place because it was about photographs. That's what I do. I take pictures. Uh, I didn't at first realize, you know, just the, the popularity contest aspect of it and got really frustrated by it. It seemed like every time I got five followers, I'd lose four. And, you know, now I know that this is just part of the game and, and part of how it works. And it's really frustrating. And my growth was incredibly slow. It still is. I mean, I've been on it for several years and I would gain, you know, a few hundred followers a year. I think I'm at like a little over 1100 now. Granted, I don't sit in my spare time and, and, you know, double click photos on Instagram. I go through my feed, you know, spend a few minutes a day on it. Um, but at times I've spent a, a fair amount of time setting up using programs like Buffer and other programs that auto auto post for you, um, setting a lot of stuff up and, and trying to keep content going out there. Because something that I ended up doing was spending a huge amount of time going online and reading blogs about how to gain followings and what people want and what they don't want and you know, Instagram basically saying that people have such a short attention span. Um, you can't post pictures of your family or you can't po post pictures of your cats or whatever if you if you want to have a, a successful landscape photography page. Um, if you want to go on and just use it as art and just post fun pictures of whatever you want and you don't care about the amount of followers you have, that's totally different. Um, so, uh, yeah, I spent hours and hours and hours working on all this, and none of it really seemed to work. Um, I had a few major, huge brands um, repost my stuff. Didn't really do anything, got me a few followers, got them a ton of free advertising, yay for them. Um, but yeah, I just did, I didn't really, I didn't really get it, and I still don't. Um, so last year, an interesting thing happened, and I met a guy who I'm a huge fan of his photography. He's one of my favorite photographers. Um, I met him and talked to him about this and a little bit, and he has a huge following. He has like 60,000 followers on Instagram. And what was really interesting is that I found out that he doesn't really have much business that I don't. Um, I don't think he was necessarily any more successful financially as a photographer than I am. Granted, I don't know if that's because he doesn't want it. I don't know if he's not utilizing his base. I don't know. You know, we didn't get into specifics about finances, but he still has a full-time job. Um, maybe he likes that. Um, but it was really eye-opening. Like, oh, wow, I thought 60,000 followers. This guy must have, you know, companies approaching him for, you know, advertising and and people buying his prints and people wanting workshops like regularly and that wasn't wasn't the case uh shortly after this i met another guy who has about half that about twenty five thousand followers and he doesn't sell any prints and same thing like his business doesn't really seem like it's anywhere mine isn't um and he had a lot of really interesting stuff to say because he talked a lot about the algorithm and how you know you're you're putting your work out there and this computer program is deciding how many people even see it so if i have 1100 followers on instagram why does a post averagely get 250 to 300 likes um and if it's a post that's not what I normally post, less than 100. <clears throat> Is that because only that many of my followers 
give a crap or is that because only that many of my followers are just even seeing that post? Is Instagram just not showing it to as many people? Or was the post just not that good? A few weeks ago, we had some snow in Portland and it's not a super common thing. And it wasn't sticking to the ground or anything, but I, I ran up to the St. John's Bridge and took a whatever just average shot of it with snowflakes coming down in front of it. And I posted it on Instagram that afternoon and it got like a thousand likes. It was like, you know, nothing special, but for some reason it got way more than shots that I've worked a lot harder to get and that I think are significantly more beautiful photographs. Um, and that just confused me. It's like, so is this because it's snowing in Portland and this is what is really relevant at that exact moment. Um, and a picture I took at Glacier National Park a year ago, when is that relevant? When is the best time? What are the right hashtags? I, I don't know. It, it just ends up frustrating me. And I'll do something like that where it's just like, okay, I have some time, I'm gonna share this photo. And then I'll have work that I've worked really, really hard on and really excited to share and I share it and I don't get much of a response. And it's just kind of like, well, what, what, what the hell? And it kills my motivation. It's like, I, I don't know. I, it's really frustrating, but I feel like I have to do it. I, I would imagine that you're just thinking to yourself, just stop posting, but I don't, I don't know how to get my work out there. I don't know how to share it with people without using these platforms. And the, the people that follow me on Instagram do, I do care about them and that there are several people that comment on all my photos that I know appreciate my work and me posting and them acknowledging it is awesome. But I don't know if that outweighs the frustration I get from it. Facebook is, is basically the same thing. Facebook, I didn't use much at first. I mean, I used it for personal frustration with politics and whatnot. Um, but I started going to some photography groups on Facebook and seeing what people were posting and I'm like, oh, that's cool. And you know, maybe these people dig what I do. So um, I started pushing more of my, I had had a business page, but I started posting to it more and, and posting to these groups. And at first the response was huge. I mean, I got a ton of new followers, uh, not really any business. Um, a lot of people would ask me where to buy prints and I would you know, send them a link to my website and never hear from them again. Um, I think people think that it should be a lot cheaper than it is, but it's a tremendous amount of work and prints cost a lot to print. And uh, yeah, there's a lot to it. But the uh, the response started going downhill. It was, it was really weird. Um, in these groups, it, it seemed like they like you to post pictures from your personal page. They're not really a fan if you're like sharing your business page because they don't like people promoting their small businesses for some reason. I don't know. It should be about the photograph, not the the source, I guess, or the words of the in your title of your page. Um, but it was interesting because there was a couple times that I shot and there were other photographers shooting at the same place, Sunrises in Portland, that I was like, okay, I recognize that guy. He posts in this group and it's like, okay, I want to, I want to get my post up into the group before his. And I did that and didn't get a great response. And this one time in particular, somebody posted a cell phone shot of like the group of us shooting and it got a huge response. And it was just like, what, is, like, why is that? Is it, I mean, it was a, not a good quality photograph. Um, but I, I just don't know. I, I, I can't figure it out. I can't figure out what makes some posts so much more interesting to people than others. And I've tried to use that information to, you know, choose the direction that my posts go so I can, you know, I can grow my following. But why? Why am I trying to grow my following? I just don't. 
I don't know. And I don't know if I'll ever know. I would love to hear from you and what experiences you have with Instagram, Facebook, any of them, any of the platforms and what it does for you and what, what are the perks? Is it worth the time that you invest? Sometimes I spend more time working on my posting than I do shooting. And if you're a photographer, there's no, <laughs> nothing better to do for your business than to just keep shooting. I mean, you get better at your craft and, and you have a wider um, library, a bigger library for to show people. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm venting, I'm frustrated. I've never, there, there's nothing else about photography that really frustrates me like this. And, you know, my, my direction has changed where I, I don't like my day job very much anymore. I had a child and my day job doesn't, the schedule doesn't really work with my kid. And I want photography to be my business. I have really enjoyed starting shooting people. I never used to shoot portraits and, and I'm having a lot of fun doing that. And it's easier to make money than from landscape work. Um, but the more I, you know, these days, the more time I spend just shooting and working on my business, I'll take days and say, okay, today I'm just going to work, I'm not going to shoot. I'm just going to work on promotion. And I just get frustrated and then I don't want to shoot. And, um, yeah, it's, it's a never ending battle that I know a lot of other people go through as well. So yeah, let me know what you think. Uh, I know YouTube is a, a platform that has downvoting and I mentioned I'm not a big Reddit fan because of the downvoting. But uh, do keep in mind that to me, YouTube is a learning tool. I don't use it as social media. And I actually appreciate the downvotes because if I'm going on YouTube for a, a gear review or something or to try to figure out how to use something and there's a ton of downvotes, I usually assume that, okay, this is a waste of my time. I don't need to scrub through the video to try to figure out the answer to my question because it's probably not going to be answered or it's going to be answered poorly. Um, but yes, I'd love to hear your comments and uh, know what what it does because maybe you know something that I don't. Maybe you know a trick that I know that will help me feel better about all the time that I'm, I'm spending on this. So thanks and have a great day. Bye.